Hi, this is just going to be a quick follow-up video to my previous one on the HP 3457A multimeter. And you notice that I mentioned the 3478A multimeter that uh, I was replacing with the 3458A. And uh, I just realized I thought I had done a video tearing down uh, this 3478A, but I hadn't. So I thought I'd just uh, uh, take the covers off and uh, give you a quick look around and see how very similar it is to the 3457A. Uh, and really, um, the performance of this thing is almost identical, not too far off the uh, 3457A. So if you don't need the uh, fancy math uh, functions or anything like that, this is an excellent and, oh, and if you don't need the extra um, six and a half extra digit resolution, the six and a half digits, and this is an excellent five and a half digit uh, multimeter, and you can pick them up for quite uh, reasonable prices if you look around in uh, pretty good condition. So highly recommend it uh, as a uh, precision five and a half digit multimeters. But just a brief look at the back here, it's got uh, almost identical uh, inputs to the front, the uh, four wire switchable you can switch uh, the terminals from the front to the rear which can be uh, quite handy it doesn't have the current on the uh, rear terminal but certainly does have the uh, two and four wire ohms input and it's got gpib interface of course you can set the address and this one is not auto line frequency sensing like the uh, 3457a which automatically when it powers up detects the line frequency and uh, uh, takes care of that. This one you have to actually switch it between 50 or 60 hertz there. Standard IC mains input, external trigger out. And the case comes off this thing quite easily. There's just two screws at the back plus uh, one on the bottom and it just slides off and single board uh, construction basically apart from the uh, switching board here to switch the uh, terminals from the front to the back. But it's uh, a very similar uh, design. Bigger, it, this is a previous design to the 3457A. It actually uh, predates it, but you can see the similarities between the two, and they use lots of common parts as well, as we'll see. And it's got a nice uh, extension bar up here for the main switch, and there's the main switch tucked in there, very nicely uh, heat shrunk. Down in there, they've got just a uh, regulator, a linear, I believe it's a linear regulator. It's got a HP part number on it. Just put some wires over to here like this. That'd be the regulator that's uh, powering all of this uh, digital stuff all around here. The main uh, processor, there's the backup battery, which we'll talk about. And uh, they're just using that for uh, heat sinking on the side. I mean, I don't think this thing uh, uses much power particularly, so that's why they can get away with the linear regulators inside this, which are of course much quieter than uh, having switching regulators, and that's why they need less uh, shielding and stuff like that inside. But uh, there's our mains transformer there. It is uh, fused on the back down there. We've got our GPIB cable going across, and they basically split this thing into the, uh, just like they did in the uh, 3457A, they split it into the digital or the uh, processing and display section up here and then electrically isolated from the analog or measurement part down in the bottom here. And you should be able to see that split pretty clearly from, I, I'll show you more detail in here, but it basically splits around like that. And there's this uh, shield here which you take a look at and you can see that there's no traces and the ground planes are separated between these two halves here, these are obviously our two uh, opto couplers, so it's got that uh, single serial line in and out uh, actually connecting the two sections, just like the 3457A, uh, and there you go. And this section, of course, has its own uh, power supply, its own uh, transformer tap on there, completely isolated, goes into some linear voltage regulators here, plus minus 12 or 15 volts or something like that, and a uh, 5 volt regulator as well, powers all this circuitry in the measurement section. And you can see the two uh, opto isolators there. They've got the HP part number. I won't bother looking it up. Some people in the uh, forum have posted uh, uh, links to uh, cross-references of all the part numbers to their real things, but they'll be just, you know, like 4N25s or uh, some sort of similar uh, type opto coupler. It is an 8-pin uh, dip package, though. Now, curiously, the service menu I've got for the 3478A um, doesn't show these two devices. It actually shows uh, two transformers instead. Actually, uh, you know, transformer coupling uh, the serial signals from one side to the other, but that's not what's going on here. So there's um, clearly some design differences between these units. So 
Yeah, if you've got any idea where you can clarify that, please let me know. And yes, lots of those uh, HP part numbers all the way through this, probably half the chips in here have HP part numbers on them. Now you'll notice in here that there's another actuator arm going up there like that, which uh, uh, mounts on, goes to this riser board, which has a, presumably a very high quality uh, low EMF uh, switch up here, which basically switches all four of the terminals from the rear. They go along the bottom of the case down in there. They're not shielded at all. They don't really uh, need to be because there's not an, a lot of, you know, high, really high frequency uh, switching stuff really just spewing out noise in this thing. So it's, uh, you know, it's not going to be too bad at all. And if more than good enough, obviously, for the performance of this fairly precision five and a half digit meter. But there's the four terminals on the back there and they just switch those through, either the front terminals are also wired through similarly, front and the back, very simple, but it works. And you'll notice the identical uh, switching, input switching hybrid here, uh, that's used in its big brother we saw in the previous video. And there's lots of similarities, of course, these uh, Koto, high quality Koto relays down in here for the uh, switching. There's not nearly as many of them as are in, is in uh, its big brother, so uh, presumably less uh, self-testing and stuff like that. But it still does have self-test and switching capability, so really high quality relays, high quality parts, as far as the eye can see. And the measurement process is a bit different. Instead of an 8051, it's actually an 80 Intel 8049. But most of the chips in here are uh, 1990. So this unit was um, built in late 1990 or thereabouts or maybe early 1991. And you'll notice exactly the same um, hybrid uh, multi-slope analog to digital converter chip, or it's actually the uh, logic for the analog to digital converter. It's not an actual anal analog to digital converter as you know it. It's uh, the external um, the external integration capacitor around the outside, the external switching and stuff like that is done outside. This is just the logic for a multi-slope uh, analog to digital converter, which is uh, quite a neat way to do it. And of course the voltage reference, absolutely identical linear technology it's got the HP part number, but uh, as we found out, that is a, a linear technology LM399. So exactly the same uh, voltage reference. I presume it's the same uh, grade that's uh, used in its uh, big brother. So the specs are going to be very similar, if not uh, identical, to its big brother. I think they are slightly different in some respects, but not by a huge margin. That's why if you don't need the extra digit resolution and you don't need the math functions, this... Um, 3478A is a really great precision meter. Now there's some uh, talk about this multi-slope uh, analog to digital uh, converter technique on the uh, forum so it's well worth reading and it is a very interesting technique. It, it basically um, is you know, not too dissimilar I guess to uh, your traditional uh, dual slope integration and it basically measures the, uh, the time period so it's basically a really precise timer instead of being a more traditional analog to digital uh, converter as such like a flash analog to digital converter etc. It's based on precision timing measurements of charging and discharging a reference capacitor to known reference voltages and you can get very precise and by using a few tricks very quick way to uh, actually uh, sample that's why these things can have you know hundreds of samples per second. And you can see the one nanofarad reference uh, cap down there, C410, I believe it is. And yeah, it's plus minus 10%. Like its actual value does not matter. Once again, it's the stability of that cap capacitor with temperature. So that would be a low, a very stable low temp co uh, capacitor, some sort of, you know, polyprop or uh, something like that. Some sort of uh, precision capacitor would have been carefully chosen for this application. And of course it's a dead giveaway uh, that it's the reference cap because look at its physical size and proportions for a simple, what, a one nanofarad cap. You know, you could have just used a, you know, a crappy bypass cap like this if it was just doing bypass applications. So it's a dead giveaway that you don't see caps like that unless, unless they're used for precision applications like this one. And there's uh, differences in the main processor section over here. The main processor is actually an Intel um, 8039. And if we go over to here, we can see an Intel uh, 8291A GPIB controller. 
And this looks like the original uh, Panasonic battery in this thing, and it's still measuring uh, 3.49 volts, so still probably have some life left, but there's been a bit of discussion about these batteries on the EEV blog forum and how they can possibly have, depending on the type, a very flat discharge characteristic, and not being able to determine uh, you know, how much life is left just based on the measured voltage. So if you do get this sort of gear, um, it's often it's not a bad idea to actually replace the batteries. But as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, this battery holds all of the uh, calibration data in the volatile memory. So if you simply just uh, desolder this thing and wire in a new one, um, there's no internal capacitor on there to keep the uh, charge on this thing. Um, while you replace the battery. So if you simply just take it out and replace it, you're going to lose all that calibration data and your meter's useless. You've got to send it away and pay the same money or more again as what you paid for it to get the thing properly traceably calibrated. So really, when you're uh, replacing these batteries, you need to be very careful because the negative uh, terminal on here, which is up here, is going to be mains earth referenced. If you use your soldering iron, for example, even if you power this thing on, if you leave the power on when you actually solder it, it might be okay. This soldering iron goes on the negative terminal over here. And it's all ground, mains earth reference. You're not going to do any uh, uh, damage at all. But if you then place your iron on this positive terminal over here, bang, you've just shorted it out to mains earth and directly back to the negative terminal. You short out the battery and you could potentially, um, if you're not careful, lose your calibration constant. So what you need to do is actually, uh, well, the safest way to do it is to um, solder another battery in parallel or diode or it in there. Um, I would actually solder it on. Some people say, oh, you can just connect it in there and, you know, with uh, alligator clips or something like that. But if you get a dodgy connection, eh, you can lose your data. I wouldn't risk it. I would actually go to the effort to solder another battery in there, possibly diode or with this one so that you can uh, keep that contents alive while you safely desolder this one with the mains uh, power cord disconnected so that you uh, don't create any uh, earth loop shorts in the thing and short out the battery and therefore your contents. So just be careful. And the manual for this one uh, says the battery is supposed to be a lithium sulfur dioxide one, but uh, it's clearly not because they would be, well, and it says it on there as well, plus three volts, but this one's actually, um, you know, a 3.45, uh, almost 3.5 volts. So clearly they've uh, put a different type in there. Now, this shield here is uh, rather interesting. You'll notice that's actually connected down to a trace down there, and it's connected, it's bent like that, and it's sort of shielded. It's a, sort of attempting to shield some of the digital circuitry over here. You'll note it's right near the crystal, and that's probably the reason why it's doing it, probably trying to shield it from one side to the other. And you'll notice that that a trace actually goes around here, and if you follow it, it might not be easy to get on camera, but it goes down to this brown wire here, which then jumps over to the LCD, um, a point on the, uh, well, on the uh, keypad board down there, and then it goes off through the case, I'll try and get it, and then it uh, actually comes and it's connected onto the earth chassis down here, and of course that, then that earth is then connected over to the mains earth terminal all the way over here. So, um, yeah, that shield is mains earth referenced, but they've actually got, they've gone to the trouble to sort of flow that around the board there. You can see that trace snaking its way around like that. So they're isolating, they're, they're trying to shield all of this part of it from the measurement part of the circuit. So I'm not, I'm not sure of the, the, you know, the advantage of just that shield like that. It's not like it's, you know, a can covering all of the digital circuitry or, any, or anything like that. So I'm not sure if it's actual effectiveness. Um, but it's obviously uh, strategically located. I don't think it's uh, an accident that the main crystal and there's the main processor and there's probably, you know, a fair bit of that's probably around here is probably the uh, highest frequency uh, stuff that we've actually got happening inside this multimeter. So they just, I don't know, they've decided to add that in. 
So there you have it, there's a classic HP 3478A, just a quick look inside this thing. It's well worth um, just downloading the service manual and uh, having a read and start reading about how the multi-slope uh, converter works and other stuff. And they're quite fascinating devices, very well engineered. Um, as I said, I highly recommend uh, picking one up if you're in the market for a precision five and a half digit multimeter if you can get it for a reasonable price on eBay by all means do so so if you want to discuss it jump on over to the EV blog forum catch you next time